Hi, my name is Sridhar Rangayan. I'm the festival director of Kashish Mumbai International Queer Film Festival, which is having its 12th edition right now. So uh, we have been doing a lot of panel discussions on various uh, LGBTQIA plus focus, but this panel discussion is really special because it pertains to LGBTQ plus film festivals. And we have a bunch of wonderful film film festival programmers and directors uh, with us today uh, from not just India, but across the world. And we are very happy to have this whole uh, panel discussions about LGBTQ plus film festivals and how it helps in community building. So uh, this particular panel discussion is being sponsored by the government of Quebec. And I'm going to introduce uh, people one by one. Uh, so the moderator uh, is Andrea Kuhn. Uh, Andrea Kuhn has been the director of the Nuremberg International Human Rights Film Festival since 2007. Andrea is a member of the European Film Academy and the proud owner of a 2010 Gay Games gold medal in football. Wow, you're a star, <laughs> totally. And, uh, uh, and 2007 seems to be a landmark year because uh, Dialogues Film Festival uh, was also launched in 2007. And uh, Anindya is a trans feminist, uh, transgender rights and social justice activist based in Kolkata, India, whose relationship with trans feminism has spanned over two decades. In 1998, she co-founded Pratyai Gender Trust, one of the early collectives in India for gender non-conforming and transgender persons facing harassment, stigma, and violence for their gender identity expression. So Pratyai Trust uh, is one of the partners uh, who have been holding dialogues since 2017, 2007 till now. And uh, we also have Kat Sedzer, uh, who is a director of programming at Image Place Nation, Montreal's LGBTQ Film Festival. Kat has been a guest lecturer at Concordia University, McGill University, and Venier College, and sits on the advisory committee of Media Queer CA, the Queer Media Database, Canada's Stroke Quebec. As well, they have served as a member of the jury at Frameline, San Francisco LGBT Film Festival, Inside Out, Toronto LGBT Film Festival, and several others. Thank you, Kat, for joining us today. And uh, then we have Sadat Munir. Sadat Munir is a founder and creative director of Arcs International Minorities Festival, Film, Art, and Dialogue a festival that focuses on minorities and marginalized communities to eliminate socio-political aspects of transgender queer people of color living in Pakistan, UK, and Denmark. He's also a filmmaker. Ux International Minority Festival, launched in April 2014, is a global human rights initiative designed to facilitate socio-political and cultural dialogues. And then we have Priya Babu, who is a very well-known transgender activist, always championing for transgender rights in Tamil Nadu. She also started a theater group called Kannadi Kalai Kulu, is it right? Yeah, uh, uh, which beats Mirror Theater Group uh, and performed at more than 75 schools, colleges, streets in Tamil Nadu to create awareness about transgender community through theater performances. She's also the founder of Transgender Resource Center, India's first resource center for trans studies. And Transgender Resource Center is uh, basically has been uh, holding the Trans Film Festival and Awards uh, in Madurai, uh, which was started in 2018 and was held for two days the festival screened 39 movies from various states in India related to transgender lives. The festival was also held in 2019, and we'll find out whether it was held in 2020 or not. And uh, I'm basically representing Kashish Mumbai International Queer Film Festival, uh, which started in 2010 and has been in the existence for the last 11 years. We are right now at the 12th edition of the festival. So thank you, and Andrea, and over to you to moderate this. You have an eclectic panel of various people from India, uh, Europe, uh, Canada, I mean, and you in Germany, so it's fantastic. So thank you for uh, helping moderate this panel and we hope we have a fantastic discussion. Thank you, Sridhar, for the introduction and thank you for the invitation. Uh, and thank you all, uh, dear panelists, for being part of this. Um, we already heard a little bit about your festivals, but I would like to ask you, maybe we have a first go around uh, specifically, when we talk about community building, who is your community, uh, the community of your festival? Is it, can you easily define who you're addressing um, with your festival? Um, because I'm, then maybe that's the first definition that's interesting for us. Who is that community? Because I know a number of your festivals are very diverse and inclusive in their approach. So who is your community? So maybe, Sala, maybe you could start um, it's also a very interesting case with uh, Axe Film Festival because it's both placed in Denmark and in Pakistan, which sounds like a very diverse um, and very different audience that you're addressing. Who is the community uh, that your festival could help build? Hey, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Shridhar for inviting me to do such a 
great panel and also uh, thank you for having me with you all. Uh, regarding community, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, but, but uh, since we are like a mobile national festival, so we have uh, proceedings in Denmark and also in Pakistan, so uh, we, I mean, uh, there are like two different sorts of setups. Uh, in Pakistan, we have, uh, I mean, most of our festival is run by the community. It's mostly trans and uh, sexual minorities festival. Uh, there's already, uh, you know, a history of transgender of Waja Sira community in Pakistan. So, so that community is so str uh, like strong knitted community. So we, like as a festival, didn't have to make a lot of efforts to make a community. But, but, but uh, our, our efforts were through our festival to, to integrate uh, other parts of the society uh, into this community or, or try to create a bridge between the, uh, you know, the ostracized or, or the community which is left alone, um, uh, the, tr the trans community or the queer community uh, to sort of a bit build a bridge between uh, the mainstream society to, to this community through, uh, by creating a platform uh, through films, through media, uh, through arts and uh, dialogue events. We are a multidisciplinary festival, so we don't only screen films. We do a lot of different stuff. We do, uh, for example, performing art events. We do dialogue events. We do comedy kit events. We do picnics. So it's, it's our way to, you know, mingle around uh, and, and tr you know, st sort of make an, an easy go, an easy access to, to the existing community uh, which had been, you know, ostracized uh, from the mainstreams for, for a very, very long time. Uh, in Denmark, um, over here, I mean, since you, I mean, there's no secret, Denmark is like such a white country. So, so, so being uh, people of a uh, person of color and, and and being part of this people of color community, we don't have as such, you know a bigger as in the UK or US uh, uh, Q, Q2 Park community. So, so through our festival, we're trying to, you know, uh, make platforms for, for community representation or, or representation of people of color uh, into the mainstream media or, or into the film festivals or, 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 or where, where we are not actually tokenized as like being outsider, but we do things our way by ourselves. So this is how we, you know, see those two different locations and the, and how we work in two different countries. Thank you so much, Sarat, for this first overview. And maybe uh, you brought something up that maybe I should also um, clarify. I think there's two things that we have. One is an audience that is intended, and the other aspect is probably community. And those might be different things or they might uh, conflate in some parts but they might be different in other parts so um, maybe if I, I if I continue with uh, Priya maybe you can tell us who is your um, audience that you're targeting and um, how can you reach your community and what is the community that you're building who is who is who are the members of that community I'm um, a target audience especially college student college uh, campus under karte college students are a target audience eh? Because over time, they will have a gender change. Hota. Schools and college students are my target audience. So, our community, the uh, uh, community, the building perspective, we do it. Both are college ka under first first time. We have a community to take it, take it, take it under uh, through the films. Their uh, jo actors, actresses, both uh, are techniques and lies. Aisa, their their college ka under we take it. So, Tabi college loco, do dinka, do din, lagata, or film dictating a tech day, Ukumalam Padata, I say community I carte. So, Yiskil, Jada focus on Lokarte. Kibatan Lokarte, O College Kasatme, Lagata, Ramlone, dialogue carte, Bosara, apart from the film festivals, Uskebatme Jada, Unkezatme connect in Reta. Tabi, Pura, Joe, environment change with the college environment change with the Bosara come Jo Log to Chupaki Rete, Ulok Disclor Karte, other Ake, Film Festival, Dodin Ke Badake, Amko Disclor Karte. So mainly Amara Ek Film Festival, nearly Ekdin, two thousand Ka Upper Amaka people Ate Rete, which nearly 
फाइव टू सिक्स 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 हंड्रेड का जो सीट्स रहता है तो पीपल मूविंग uh, करते रहते इसके लिए जो एक दिन में दो दो जा, दो हजार के ऊपर हम लोग ने लोग आते जाते इसके लिए दो दिन के लिए चार हजार लोगों उधर उधर उनको देखने के लिए मिलता है Ted I would like to to move on to you uh you're present, representing the oldest film festival in the panel a uh, very impressive uh 30 years plus experience uh and I I believe the festival must have changed dramatically since it was uh conceived and what it is now um what can you tell us about audience target audience maybe and also community in that context Actually that's exactly right it is as our festival is going into its 34th year Yes in fact um an audience has absolutely absolutely changed over more than 3 decades um i have to say that one of the kind of challenges that we have right now is that there is a long standing kind of established audience that perhaps i think i could be unique in this being a north american festival that is predominantly um male and gay and kind of of you know sort of middle age getting over which were for years and years and years and we appreciate them extremely were the kind of the lifeblood and in fact you know the stable audience base that would put the bums in the seats that would allow for us to have diverse programming because they would come and see the popular titles and buy tickets and you know and therefore um other initiatives could be supported increasingly we have enlarged our audience um embracing a queer audience um definitely trying to reach that elusive youth audience which I do believe that all festivals do have a challenge doing um and in particular for us in the last few years is really focusing on building an audience that is building an audience and also building the filmmakers that we serve that are um from underrepresented um lgbt queer voices in particular indigenous queer voices here in canada is extremely important to us um as we are located in montreal and quebec which is a bilingual province unique in our country in that of course we are english and french so we want to encourage um francophone artists that are also from underrepresented communities that are within a canadian media landscape often also as well underrepresented voices so we're really in a moment of flux we're really in a moment of change of our organization and what our initiatives are to try to build and try to support filmmakers in a whole roster of new interesting ways um thank you cat um and also if you go to the if to your website i was really impressed by the very different uh, strands that your festival is taking um at this point um so I recommend everyone to check it out uh, even if you're not in Canada or Montreal um thank you Anitya um you're also representing a festival that I from uh, unfortunately I haven't been able to attend but what from what I could see online that is very diverse in approach and it also has a pronounced feminist agenda um which which I like a lot can you tell us something I I would resonate with what Kat just said and I think um, you know we have been uh, in this festival space uh, doing this for the past uh, this is going to be our 15th year in India and uh, though uh, we know that there have been um, uh, several other attempts at building queer festivals uh, film queer film festivals in India and then um some of those uh, attempts have been sporadic some of those events have run for a few years so we we understand that how queer spaces are emerging were emerging spaces it had its own sets of challenges and uh for us what was very important was because calcutta has had has been in the forefront as a city uh in the in the spectrum of indian cinema uh, it it became for, for us an imperative to sort of pitch onto that legacy of cinema that the city uh, has always had and then ask this uncomfortable question as to where is queer cinema placed in all of this celebration of cinema as it were so so dialogues became as a space where i think we we, we were successful we have been successful in 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 uh, making that rupture and the the audience really uh, is a very interesting question about the audience because i think we have had we have actually had a quite a bit of rethink around audience as to who really is our audience is our audience only going to be limited to uh, trans queer persons 
um, you know, uh, from the city or, 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 or the state uh, at large? Or, or are we sort of really going to keep it very fluid and open so that, you know, it really creates a space for dialogue, it really creates a space for conversation? And I don't think that we really have a definite answer to this, but it's also important as to how we did not want this to become a sort of a silo or like, a, like or how it might be seen to be some kind of a ghetto. And I think many questions were important, therefore, as to the venue that we chose to, you know, um, uh, host the festival, what sort of venue, what kind of collaborations, what kind of programming, what kind of cinema do we then, I mean, what would, how do we curate the films? So I think uh, for us, it's, it is a hybrid space. For us, it is a space where we do have people who identify as being trans and queer to come and, and sort of occupy the space and celebrate and observe uh, or use the site as a site of protest. You know, these multiple ways of expressing our queerness and our transness, but also keeping in mind the fact that this is a space that is an open space for anybody who is questioning, who is not clear, who is who doesn't know, or who's who could be, you know, like like Sadat was saying, you know, uh, from the mainstream. Though you know these binaries don't often operate in a very uh, you know, uh, in, a, in a streamlined manner. But of course, to, to be very open about the fact that there could be a lot of transfusions of multiple kinds, a lot of mixing and a lot of, um, you know, that kind of, um, and it's, uh, something else can come out of that. And that is the language that we're still seeking, I would suppose, I, I, I suppose. I like that you talk so strongly about the space because I think that is relevant to all the festivals are represented here. And I, I assume for every film festival in the world, whether it's uh, serving specific communities or not, um, is the physical space. How do you create, try to create that kind of space? And what are your challenges in doing so? Space had been actually one of the main motivation for us to, to, to start this festival. Uh, I, I mean, the whole story of our festival, it begins with um, I happen to be a filmmaker or just like a hobby filmmaker. So, so back in 2010, I made this uh, documentary where, where I met some fabulous people in Pakistan and we did a, an amazing, very intimate documentary, but that film ended up being in, in foreign film festivals. I, uh, we somehow managed to bring fun, some of the protagonists to, to Copenhagen to, to join in for the film festival. But uh, after the screening, uh, the people who came, flew from Pakistan with us to, uh, to Copenhagen for the screening, they had this big question mark in the face that uh, how come we don't have those spaces back home? Because I mean, they were like uh, people living abroad or people living in, in that part of the world. They, they, they want to get knowledge about us, but, but we are not afraid of them. We don't want to be part of their lives because we are so far away from each other, each other. But people who are already living very close to us but never you know, make an, any effort to come close to us because they do not know us well. So these kind of spaces are much needed back home in Pakistan. So this is how the whole festival started. So, so the mother of the festival is called Nidhi Rana. So she's like uh, my friend's mother. And, I, and she start, and I, this, it was her idea. So this is how we started our festival. And I still remember our first day of festival in Pakistan back in 2014. Uh, that was the first time ever in Pakistan where trans people, uh, people from the Fuada Sira community, uh, they shared the same space with, um, oh, with, 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 with uh, you know, the mainstream audience, I would call it. Uh, and, and, and that was just like, you know, a moment of joy and also a moment of co comfort. We had so many people, like we had people like renowned artists from Pakistan, they came to us and, and they were like, okay, we have had, never had this uh, chance to meet those people. And now we can see uh, these kind of spaces are much needed. You know, our, our main focus had been that we want to create a space where everyone can feel safe. Yeah, of course, uh, finances are always a challenge, but, but um, you know, but that's not the, you know, biggest, you know, challenge. We have several other challenges, and especially in Pakistan, we have challenges from, from the government. Keeping those aside, our main motivation is to create safe space, have everyone with us, uh, regardless of what kind of back economic background they're coming from, what kind of, you know, 
you know, group or, 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 or community they represent. So, so it should be a space where we can respect each other and, and be, have a this subtle discussion after a film or have this, you know, you know, subtle joy of watching film or art program while we're doing in respect to each other. Thank you. Kat, do you want to go next? Uh, in terms of creating the spaces and bringing different audiences together, it is a real, real challenge for us. Like, and at one point, you know, going back to being um, the oldest queer festival in Canada, is that there is, we really have this kind of moment of wanting to respect the elders, wanting to respect those audiences that really have, you know, embraced and cherished imagination for years and years and years. Um, and also at the same time, trying to allow for a space that will bring in new voices and new vibrant uh, filmmakers and, and that kind of a stuff. So those, those two audiences are really, you know, can really be at, uh, in, in contest with one another in terms of who gets the space and who, you know, who can, who can afford in numbers to attend this space. Um, and I, you know, back in 2019 and earlier when we were occupying physical cinema spaces, um, it was as simple as we have one venue that is 1200 seats and then we have two others that are around sort of 150 and, you know, max two, 200 seats. So a 1200 and a 200. And that kind of spatial divide is that of course, films that are going to sell quite a lot of tickets will be in this gigantic cinema. Who is going to be going to the gigantic cinema is, you know, that audience that, yes, I keep saying we cherish very, very much. Um, and they can come in numbers where, so therefore films, you know, perhaps documentaries um, that are really talking about underrepresented voices, um, films by, you know, trans work, films by trans women and, and lesbian queer women, those sorts of ones always just by the sheer number of people buying tickets get into, you know, put in the other space. And I have not in, I've been doing this festival for uh, 20 years. It has been my, my challenge for 20 years to figure out how, how to share the space and how to even, you know, allow those two audiences to, to see and to embrace the work that is shown in those two spaces. Um, as of 2020, when we all went online, that really did open up the potential for, you know, sort of evening a playing field and, and for us anyways, excitingly allowing to include, you know, so much work that we were absolutely exhausted. And we also even began a new festival, our short film festival, which we're having our second edition this weekend, because we had so much work and we just could not stop programming because it was like, Sky's the limit now. We could just be online. It's not worrying about the venue costs or the whatever. So, um, it with with the virtual, I think comes a lot of a lot more possibilities and a lot more exciting potential to be reaching audiences and to to reach out beyond urban centers to have voices from you know rural parts of our province that have not been able to physically attend a big city, Montreal. You know, I know we've all shared that kind of what we can see as the kind of utopian possibility of being going virtual. I mean, and I'm not saying it is just utopian because there certainly are very, very many challenges, but that's completely a different panel. Thank you. I would I would like to move on to Aninja now because you're you seem to be agreeing with Pat, but you also stress the importance of the space where people can actually come together. While the virtual has enabled um, some of us to reach new audiences or underserved audiences, it also means the or it meant, hopefully, I think it meant for one year or two years, the end of physical contact of an actual mingling of different people. How do we get from the only virtual film festivals? Uh, do we need to get back to physical festivals to create or stay with community as such? I would, I would agree that I think for us, what has happened is of course we had no, I mean, I think none of us had really choices to host a physical festival, but I think uh, along, with the, uh, along with the possibilities that opened up uh, for having a virtual festival, 
uh, in terms of the reach. Uh, of course, we had to geoblock our films, etc. Because it's important because and it's tied to the question of the virtual screening because we had to cap the number of views. We had to we had to geoblock the films, etc. Uh, so those were those were negotiations that we also learned while being uh, on the go. I mean, we really didn't know and we didn't have much time. So we actually also followed what other festivals were doing, et cetera. But I think the question really that you asked is very in interesting because, I mean, as much as we, we kind of grew as a festival uh, in terms of visibility, in terms of outreach to the online community, I think what I was missing was absolutely that aspect of the physical mingling of, and in terms of being in a physical space together, sharing the warmth and the joy and the camaraderie that comes with watching film in this dark cavernous hall, um, you know, uh, along with so many and, and sort of feeling that, that the, the, the sound and, and the images play out. What happens is we are also located in different spaces in our households, etc., and in our in our own community. So to take that time out to watch films uh, on your on your device uh, is is actually a luxury, and not many trans queer, well, especially those uh, from the working class uh, trans queer communities that would come to our festival and we you know would have that kind of space. So there would be uh, there would be cinema, there would also be friendship, there would be camaraderie and all of that. That got extremely limited. I and mean, I think I think we have done an audit of who really became our audience as much as we reached out to a large, young, internet friendly uh, generation, we lost out on uh, on the working class trans queer communities who would who did not have access to steady internet or even their own devices to constantly you know watch a film we also feel that we should be uh, we should be a little wary of how spaces become gentrified and spaces become exclusionary and then because a bit, with a lot of uh, uh, queer celebratory spaces it, it does have a and, and, and i think what cat was saying i think we we really need to understand as to how how who comes to the films who can buy those tickets of course our festival is something that we, 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 it is a free festival. It's a festival where we do not charge for tickets. So it also kind of uh, tries and addresses that barrier. But of course, it's just not the question of uh, buying tickets or not buying tickets. You know, sometimes we really also have to understand, you know, sometimes align our screening time with, uh, you know, with public transportation time that is available. So we know that those who are coming from a little far off places, those are not just aligned in the city center, can actually travel back taking the, you know, taking the last train back to, you know, where they stay, which could be, uh, which could be uh, sometimes as, as, as high as 100 kilometers away. So the thing is, you know, how do you align your, the structure of the festival, how does it address some of these nuances? How do you build that in? And for us, they have been both challenges as well as learning and I think the, the digital version of the festival certainly allowed us to explore new territories and frontiers in terms of viewership, um, you know, and also the afterlife of conversations, etc. You know, you can sort of keep your conversations, like physical conversations, if they were not recorded and kept on online, like, you know, online conversations, it's far easier to kind of record, like, like this conversation is being recorded, it would have, so, so, the, so also to deal with the afterlife of images, the afterlife of conversations. But uh, for us, I think that the project is to, is to, is to see as to how do, we, how do we make available these conversations, how do we make available these films to communities and people who do not have uh, access to internet or at least a steady internet or you know, individual devices. And particularly in a situation like this when we're still uh, dealing with uh, you know, remnants of the epidemic. Thank you very much. Um, uh, very good question. In 2020, we did not do a festival. Before we did a festival in 2018 and 2019, we did it for two years. Before that, we did it for two times in different places. I said that we always had to target school and college. I was a child in a dropout. I couldn't study in school college because of the gender expression. My gender expression was always disclosed. तभी स्कूल से मैंने एक्सक्लूड हुआ था मतलब ज़्यादा पढ़ने के लिए चांसेस नहीं मिला इसके लिए वी आर फोकसिंग ओनली स्कूल्स एंड कॉलेजेस 
और और दूसरा बात था हम लोग आमने सामने अगर एक मतलब फिल्म फेस्टिवल करने के टाइम पे हमको बहुत अच्छा लेसन मिला था ऑडियंस का ऑडियंस का जो उनका व्यू किया था उनका एक्सप्रेशन किया था वो देखने के लिए मिलता है क्योंकि वो इम्पोर्टेंट है क्योंकि ऑडियंस एक, एक एक फिल्म को देखने के बाद हाँ ऐसा करते कभी रोते कभी उनका एक्सप्रेशन ज्यादा करने के उनको देखने के लिए मिलता है उसके बाद में मैं दो तीन बहुत सारा टाइप देखती थी एक फिल्म अगर देखने के बाद में हम लोग कॉन्वर्सेशन रखते थे तभी वो जो जो ऑडियंस है ऑडियंस से कोई लोग आके हमको हमको गले मिलाते कोई रोते उसके बाद में हमारा पास फोटो निकालते उनका फ्रेंड्स लोग को वो फोटो को शेयर करते वो सारा उधर फीलिंग्स मैंने मेरे को ये हो रहा एक बहुत सारा एक फीलिंग्स हम लोग देखने के लिए मिल सकता है मगर जो रिचुअल जो फिल्म फेस्टिवल में ये सब मिसिंग होता है मेरा हिसाब से अनिंदिया जो बोलती वो भी सही बात है क्योंकि बहुत सारे लोग के पास इंटरनेट नहीं था वो वो ये एक बात था और दूसरा बात ये जो एक्सप्रेशन है ना ये इसमें हो सकता है का वो एक बहुत बड़ा क्वेश्चन है क्योंकि एक मैं एक एक अच्छा एक एक आउटकम बोलती थी हमेशा अमेरिकन कॉलेज में हम लोग ने फिल्म फेस्ट करते थे सेकेंड ईयर का जो फिल्म फेस्टिवल होने के बाद में वो प्रिंसिपल आके उन्होंने अनाउंस किया था कोई भी ट्रांसमैन ट्रांसमैन हमारे कॉलेज में आके पढ़ना चाहते थे उनका फुल फीस हम लोग ने रिलैक्सेशन करते करके उसके बाद में दो ट्रांसजेंडर उदय उनको पढ़ाई उधर कंप्लीट किया था अभी भी दे ओपन फॉर ट्रांस कम्युनिटी फ्री एजुकेशन सो इतना इतना तब होने के लिए बहुत चांसेस था मगर विचुअल मीटिंग में ये सब बहुत कम होता था एक्सप्रेशन नहीं मिलता था लोग देख के ऐसा चले जाते थे मगर ये एक्सप्रेशन ये ये सब नहीं हो सकता है सो फाइनली फिल्म फेस्टिवल कल्चरल मीट ऑल्सो तो वो टाइम पे बहुत सारा ट्रांस कम्युनिटी बाहर से आके उधर नाच गाना करते थे तभी का टाइम पे कॉलेज स्टूडेंट्स भी उनके साथ में नाच गाना करना शुरुआत करते थे एक अच्छा एक रिलेशनशिप बढ़ने का बहुत मौका था उधर मगर वर्चुअल मीटिंग में ये सब मिसिंग होता है थैंक यू when you hear other people saying stuff so 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 there were also a few things that i maybe forgot to tell our fest was also for free of cost in pakistan but in denmark we charge money but but and and it's completely similar to what priya said and what and and they said as well um a uh, you know the the the, the question of safe space uh, especially in pakistan the question of space space uh, and also gentrification due to um uh, the digitalization of the festival because i mean we unfortunately south asia is still that you know a uh, living in multiple layers of society where some people do have access which is a very smaller number of people who do have access to 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 the digital versions but we where our festivals are mainly for 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 the or, you know to create a safe space for people where, where they can sit together but in copenhagen we decided not to have any festival 2020 because a uh, even though people do have access to 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 the digital ones but but we being one of the unique festivals that or being one of the only festival that works with minority representation we 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 wanted to have be there physically so we are going to have our physical festival this year and we're not doing any digital screenings because i mean we all got like some sort of you know streaming channels that people can watch almost all those films online as well but our festival is motivated to create uh, you know spaces for the dialogues and 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 creating dialogues we need to be there digitally and and you know bring people together thank you so that i want to touch on something that priya also mentioned um said bringing uh, members from the transgender community in also to perform um so i think it's also one question of community building is how do we nurture talent from our communities and kat also touched on that when she said that you're reaching out to indigenous filmmakers to french speaking filmmakers younger filmmakers queer feminist filmmakers all the friends intersectionalities and communities how important is it also to nurture quote and quote our own talent and and does it play a role in your festival and i would like to ask uh, priya first maybe um where do the films come from that you screen anindya mentioned that a lot of negotiations international negotiations um but how's it in your case uh, i think you primarily screen films from india and and some also from the transgender community itself 
టూ థౌసండ్ ఎయిటీన్ మే ఆమెకు థర్టీ నైన్ ఫిల్మ్స్ అయ్యా ఫిర్ టూ థౌసండ్ నైన్టీన్ మే ఆమెకు ఫార్టీ టూ సంథింగ్ ఫిల్మ్ అయ్యా సో ఏ ఫిల్మ్ ఫెస్టివల్ కి అమ్లకి దో మహీనా కి పైలే అమ్ అనౌన్స్మెంట్ కరతే అమరా పూరా సోషల్ మీడియా కి అందరు అమరా పోస్టర్ జాతా ఫిర్ అమరా ఏ వెబ్సైట్ ఐ ట్రాన్స్ ఫిల్మ్ అవార్డ్స్ డాట్ కామ్ కర్ అమరా వెబ్సైట్ ఐ ఉదర్ ఆన్లైన్ మతలబ్ రిజిస్టర్ అప్లికేషన్ భీ ఉత్తర అందరు ఉన్నోనే అప్లికేషన్ ఫిల్అప్ కర్కి ఫిల్మ్ కి సెండ్ కరతే జాదా సే జాదా మరా పూరా తమిళనాడు సే అయితే మగర్ అదర్ స్టేట్ సే భీ అమ్మకు ఫిల్మ్స్ అయితే లైక్ కర్ణాటక ముంబై ఆర్ మధ్యప్రదేశ్ వాస్ ఏ భీ అమ్మకు ఫిల్మ్ అయితే తా కభీ కభీ తమిళ అండ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ హిందీ తీనో లాంగ్వేజ్ సే అమ్మకు ఫిల్మ్ అయితే ట్రాన్స్ మెన్ ట్రాన్స్ ఉమెన్ దోనో కూపర్ భీ ఫిల్మ్ అయితే ఓ సార్ సోస్కే అమ్మ జూరి జూరి స్క్రీన్ జూరి రే ఉ సెలెక్ట్ కరతే జూరి ప్యానల్ మే జరూర్ ఏ ట్రాన్స్ రేత ఫిమేల్ ఏ ట్రాన్స్ అండ్ విమెన్ ఐసా తీన్ కేటగిరీ కా తీన్ జెండర్ కి అమ్మ ఇంక్లూడ్ కరకే ఫిల్మ్ ఫైనలైజ్ కరతే ఉకే అలవా అమ్మ ఏ ఫిల్మ్ కా భీ అవార్డ్ భీ కరతే మతలబ్ ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ థౌసండ్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ థౌసండ్ టెన్ థౌసండ్ ఐసా అమరా అమౌంట్ భీ ప్రైసెస్ అమౌంట్ భీ కరతే ఇసకందర్ దో సాల్ సే దో ట్రాన్స్ జెండర్ అపన ఫిల్మ్ ఉస్పే ఉస్కందర్ ఫిల్మ్ కా ఉనోనే అభి బేస్ దియా బేజాతా ఓ ఫిల్మ్ కా భీ హమ్ లోగనే స్పెషల్ అవార్డ్ భీ దియే హర్ హర్ ఫిల్మ్ స్క్రీనింగ్ కే బాద్ మే హమ్ లోగ ఏ కల్చరల్ ఈవెంట్ నైతో స్పీచ్ నైతో ఏ డ్రామా ఐసా థియేటర్ పర్ఫార్మెన్స్ లైక్ హమ్ లోగనే కర్తే అతే సో ఇస్కందర్ అమారా ఏక బోత్ బడ ఛాలెంజ్ ఏతా ఏక తో ఫైనాన్షియల్ క్రైసిస్ హమేషా రేతా తా కికి జగా తో మిల్ జాత కాలేజ్ సే మిల్ జాత సబ్ కుచ్ మిల్ జాత తా మగర్ టెక్నికల్ పర్సన్ భీ హమారా పాస్ తా మగర్ ఉస్కా జో కంప్లీట్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఫైనలైజ్ కర్నే కే లియే ఫైనాన్షియల్ క్రైసిస్ హమేషా రేతా హై ఇస్కో జసె థర్డ్ ఇయర్ అమ్మకు నై కియా ఇఫ్ ఇట్ మే బీ అందిన్ జా ఆర్ అర్థాత్ ఇఫ్ యు వాంట్ టు సే సంథింగ్ అబౌట్ నర్చరింగ్ టాలెంట్ ఫ్రమ్ ది కమ్యూనిటీ ఐ థింక్ దట్ కెన్ బీ డిఫరెంట్ వేస్ ఇట్ కెన్ బీ బ్రింగింగ్ దెమ్ ఇన్ టు యు నో జస్ట్ యాక్చువల్లీ పేయింగ్ for performance and help, helping people to sustain themselves but it could also be uh encouraging people to express themselves in a way that could then be screened again in in the festivals and stuff like that what does it play a role in your festivals and if so how um i'll go ahead yeah with that is really something that is very very high on the list in our of our mandate is nurturing um nurturing local talents and that can be local ie in the in montreal province of quebec which we do through a program called prima quebec which is kind of a local shorts program but it is more of a showcase with um back at 2019 at earlier um a live in in venue event that was sort of more of a screening but also like a real discursive element on stage real wonderful kind of dialogue between all directors um so we have been doing those and also through that that you know we get many many submissions from from local filmmakers for that program which we've been doing for I do believe like 20 years now as well and you had mentioned that you said and it was very nice that you noticed on our website that we seem to be doing we have a lot of initiatives and one of them is which just really launched like last Tuesday um we put out the announcement that we we're doing a, an imagination story lab which is sort of a well not sort of it is a content creation incubator um for short film script writing with through a mentorship program which we are doing which will become pan canadian and that does speak to audiences because the focus is on um francophone and other represented voices and particularly francophone voices like outside of Quebec the the major francophone province to include regional voices across the country so five five um emerging filmmakers will be selected we had just had a call for participation selected and be mentored by five established um filmmakers so that's that is the beginning of what we really feel very strongly about in terms of initiatives that create that that create content that nurture you know queer local talents or queer national talents it's really i think uh, i i i've been uh, nodding so much with what kat has been saying and i think uh, i think that it's resonating so much because i think 
as much as we would like to uh, see what happens, I mean, for us, for us, is the, the challenge really is this. And sometimes we we struggle with a lot of the content that is received by us in in terms of uh, in terms of the cinematic quality of 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 uh, what is what is submitted, you know, and especially in open calls. But I think uh, we we uh, we do understand that if we are to kind of you know put uh, make this benchmark of uh, what is uh, these the most uh, um, evolved standard of film, you know, cinema especially. Then many of these emerging uh, filmmakers and content may not be able to, uh, you know, participate because they don't really make the cut. And and the challenges for them are are. Are technical, are financial, are also uh, are, are also is, is also not having access to the language of filmmaking. Some most of them have never gone to film schools. I mean, of course, not not that everybody who goes to film schools makes good films, but the point is really is is really this also that um, that you know we we are mindful of the challenges that a lot of queer filmmakers or let's say young filmmakers who want to work with queer content are facing. And uh, we we are on the verge of uh, setting up uh, setting up this lab, the incubation lab that Kat also mentioned uh, for our festival this year. And uh, this has been a learning process. So we we do encourage submission, local submissions. Sometimes, if 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 it is uh, if it is really uh, something that we aren't able to include, we have op open, honest conversations uh, with uh, the filmmakers, and then we see. Uh, uh, how uh, they could be mentored by, say, you know, uh, the team that we have at Dialogues or filmmakers who are part of us, who are associated with us. But the idea really is to have a greater and wider and more diverse representation of what what is, you know, uh, what is content. And for us, it was important to include, I mean, ever since like 15 years ago, we decided that it's just not, it's just not films but it's also video content and other kinds of content that can that comes in. So uh, animation. It's also to be mindful of the space. I mean, when you talk about nurturing, I mean, you see what has happened is we have been approached by many consulates and and you know cultural spaces that are associated uh, that are connected to the consulates or the foreign offices of uh, governments, um, various governments in India. Uh, see, some of the spaces have a huge deal of security concerns, you see, and, and that, that those spaces can become very, I mean, they have a fantastic auditorium, excellent infrastructure that, that will give us the space to do us for free. But, you know, at, at, but all of people who are going to attend it would have to go through that whole security drill of entering, etc. And we refuse to, we refuse to partner with those uh, spaces. And we refuse not only because we said we do not want to sort of uh, sort of promote a culture uh, where where, where uh, I mean as it is queer people have such an anxious lives and there's so much of anxiety there's so much of uh, concern around around I mean who can come in and who who stays out so we we are very mindful of those uh, setups in terms of uh, in terms of the physical space uh, as it were. Uh, also, how to how to make the space friendly, how to incorporate art and 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 photography and and music and all of that uh, as as allied uh, events, and where of course a lot of queer talent uh, is 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 built into into uh, making that space uh, friendly and warm and hospitable. Thank you. One more thing that I think is important to talk about when we talk about community is also the question of conflict, right? Um, we, we, we like to use queer as an inclusive term or sometimes we just do it out of, of practical reasons, but um, I think we've all experienced that sometimes that's a contested, the, the spaces that we provide are contested spaces. Ownership is contested and not everybody feels included, not, not everybody is meant. How do you deal with that? Because I can't already mentioned um, the bigger mainstream titles go into the bigger halls and then use um, the smaller audiences very, well, for lack of something else, get pushed into the smaller spaces that creates a power structure that is visible to everyone. It's like some people go left, some people go right. 
um, how do you deal with conflict and the idea of community that is sometimes a tricky concept in in the, in, in queer spaces anyway hum log hamesha college mein karte the iska reason ye tha hum log 3 4 saal se college se acha relation hai hamara kyunki hum humne film festival ka alawa literature festival हमेशा हर साल लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल करते थे और एल जी बी टी कॉन्फ्रेंस करते थे कॉलेज में थिएटर वर्कशॉप करते थे और लाइफ स्किल ट्रेडिंग हम हमेशा कॉलेज में रहते थे हम क्लास लेते थे हमारा एक लाइब्रेरी है ट्रांस लाइब्रेरी है बहुत सारा स्टूडेंट्स हमारा लाइब्रेरी में इंटर्नशिप करते हैं इसका वजह से कॉलेज का हमारा अच्छा अच्छा रिलेशनशिप है तो हम हम कॉलेज में मुझे अलावा बहुत सारा क्राइम जन को हम लेके जाते हैं थिएटर वर्कशॉप के लिए सारा चीज के लेके जाते इसके लिए कॉलेज ओपन फॉर ट्रांस कम्युनिटी तो इसके लिए उन्होंने कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं अभी अभी तक हम लोगों ने दो साल से किया था ट्रांस फिल्म फेस्टिवल लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल थिएटर वर्कशॉप सब कुछ करते थे मगर अभी तक कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं है दे आर ओपन फॉर ऑल बट एक ही चीज हमको एक तकलीफ हुआ था क्यों एक दो साल से पहले एक वो कॉलेज में एल इंडियन मीडिया ने एल करके हम लोगों ने कॉन्फ्रेंस किए थे तो उनको एल कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो गया था नॉट नॉट ओनली नॉट अ कॉलेज पर्सन उधर का क्योंकि वो क्रिश्चियन कॉलेज है तो उसके लिए बाकी जो सम प्रोफेसर है उनको को थोड़ा बहुत तकलीफ हुआ था कई के लिए तुमने हमेशा ट्रांस करते थे वाई यू आर इंक्लूड एल जी बी ऐसा करके उन्होंने कुछ आ, मतलब आवाज करते थे मगर वो अभी बाद में एक्सप्लेन करके हम लोग ने ये कर दिया आ, मतलब फिल्म फेस्टिवल कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं आया in our festival of course we had to be very mindful of the inherent dynamics the inherent power structures that exist and and sometimes uh, it sometimes those power the power structure is derived not just from what which, whichever identities uh, that one is embodying but also from uh, the intersections at which uh, we as 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 that identity is also located in terms of our own social and cultural capital the very fact that we are dealing with cinema we are dealing with something as uh, you know as precious as art and cinema and and what you know the, the kind of the, the meanings these things acquire the the fact that you would have to walk into a theater a space that many trans communities would have would feel excluded in the first place i mean and especially those coming from uh working class uh, backgrounds and i say this because very often we have we have to be very very careful about the space we are choosing or uh, because for many of us who have had the privilege of going to university and having had that kind of an education etc or being or coming from middle class or upper middle class backgrounds where we uh where we were very familiar to walk into the the to the US consulate or the german cultural center of you know not just for uh, not just for a cinema but maybe for the the, the royal shakespeare company theater production that came in etc so our familiarity with such kind of spaces and shouldn't i mean does very automatically lend us to be familiar and and to access these spaces very freely which does not translate very uh, uh so easily to other people so i think we have also have to be very mindful of the kind of gaps that exist uh and 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 so how do you how do you how do you how do you facilitate uh the uh, uh those barriers to be broken because uh, and clearly sometimes we we see that people are still uncomfortable some people might say oh i don't want to go into that film uh, watch that film because it's it's all in a foreign language and i and i don't have the training to you know read subtitles which are also in english and then match it with the image so obviously these sort of barriers do exist and how mindful are we of these uh, these is one question but also of course the 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 conflict and very often because we have had to sometimes privilege uh, trans cinema and uh, and cinema um, uh, made by um, or or at least speaking for lesbian bisexual uh, women uh, and we it's not that we often did it consciously but it sort of happened it happened and and sometimes our curation did have that bias because of course we i mean the two uh, so so dialogues is organized by a a, a lesbian bisexual uh, women's collective uh, called sapo for equality and our organization which is a trans women's collective and the gwete institute which is which is the german cultural center but so the fact is that we 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 have to be mindful of our own biases but sometimes we have kept and we have 
not kept, but we those biases have erupted into, into very difficult conversations. So we've had like we've had a bunch of uh, gay men who just stormed out of the theater saying like, why do you call this an LGBTI film festival in the first place? Because you don't keep films that, you know, that, that you know, speak to us. So, you know, like, I mean, and these were middle-aged men who got very upset that, you know, most of the films that, that are there uh, are, are essentially about either lesbian queer women or uh, or trans person, so you know, so that sort. Of, but I mean, sometimes we understand that how much of space we've also known that how much of space is occupied by whichever of our identities, and and to, and it is a tricky balance. It is a tricky space. Sometimes we have to take a difficult uh, position. We have had to take a, a position on on what are otherwise you know current political debates in the country and how it affects our own choices. You know, whether it's around you know a certain kind of hyper nationalism or or a certain kind of religious uh, dogmatism or or a certain persecution of religious minorities in our country, which is which is what we we are seeing, and it has led to real conflicts and frictions within you know within not just within the team of dialogues but also with the larger community because many people feel that you know. Pride is not for protest. Pride is not a political space. Pride is a space where um, uh, where we should be celebratory and not bring in these uncomfortable issues. And what is the connection with politics? And but but many people, and especially indigenous people and working class people and people at the, the receiving end of these, do feel that there is a real connection. And how do you then how do you build that conversation? Has been a it's, has been an enormous challenge. I, I don't know if I, I'd like to use the word conflict in it because, I mean, our festival had been just like, I mean, uh, me and, and a, lot, a lot of people who, who were, were kind of, you know, creating the festival back then, we, we were all, all of us were somehow outside and we were, most of us were diaspora Pakistanis and then we had like some Pakistanis with uh, certain privileges. So, 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 so we, 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 did, I mean, we don't see things as a, as conflicts. We 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 see them as in you know, a, some sort of a, some sort of feedback or some sort of a, you know critique towards us. So we have to resolve it. So 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 our festival is a multidisciplinary festival. So so we we do like to cater all different kind of you know issues or like if if there is a space issue like a, a accessibility issue. So then we try to solve it in a manner where we can you know make all the ends happy uh we we've had like um, during even prior to pandemic we started doing a uh, mobile cinema where we where we you know went to the areas where people were not able to i mean cities in pakistan or uh, and also in india they are huge i mean from commuting from one space to another is impossible we, we have been like very relaxed about our, you know, meeting up points. We have been relaxed about our starting up points. Like, I mean, we, we can delay films. We were also, we have been relaxed about like people can, you know, talk. We also introduced with the translation because we had also the same issue. People could not uh, understand the, uh, or read uh, the subtitles. So, so we started doing like with the translation for a lot of people and, and also make other people who can read it you know, to tolerate those kind of, you know, noise while watching the film. Uh, and the same goes with um, uh, doing screenings at the consulates and all that, those places. And we, we always put them up to the, uh, them that, that most of our audiences are coming from, or, or a, lot, a large number of audiences are coming. Either they don't have identity or they don't want to, you know, disclose their identities in, you know, while attending, so 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 if they agree to those things, then we do screenings there. Uh, and also, uh, I wanted to come back to your prior question uh, about uh, about the local nurturing the local artists and local talents. Uh, and again, I mean, we we had also the similar kind of initiatives, like we had Ax Pitch, where we, uh, you know select films uh, which are pitched to us uh, by local talents and 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 we also have like arts literary where we you know like we where we encourage local queer people to write or write blogs write poetry whatever uh, we have uh, arts theater as well so 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 we do like street theaters and those kind of like and and we try to be more and more public with 
with the local local content uh, because it's easier to chew for the mainstream audiences because when it's coming from uh, the local or or, or sometimes it's even uh, if when our 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 most popular uh, programs in Pakistan they're always Kashish film festivals program because they're in Hindi and uh, people, they're more relatable and people have more feelings towards it. So yeah, things are on its way, and uh, and yeah, we we try to you know create or make all the ends meet somehow. Certainly, my challenges and the conflicts that we face here in in Quebec, in Montreal, and also in particular in North America are very you know from what you three have explained, my our challenges are very very different, and I. Do I really, really appreciated hearing what all of you were speaking about, about how you negotiated the challenges. I really found it quite refreshing. I don't mean to belittle the comment at all by saying refreshing. In terms of kind of conflict and um, so that you had said not to see that, not to want to view it as conflict and rather as sort of challenge or creation of dialogue. I think that that is inherent in, that is inherent in our, uh, queer community to have to really address and to address on a number of levels what our intersectionality is, but also what what where we what privileges we speak from and you know what you know sort of what we are allowing others to say within our spaces. And that's particularly contestable when one does look at all of the letters, LGBT, you know, Q. There's a very big difference between being a gay white man or being a, you know, um, a black trans woman, you know, they have very, very different realities. They have very, very different um, challenges to being. So that's one of the problems I know we all have with having to put together the LGBT. For us, in terms of sort of a conflict, actually, I would sort of say, and this is on a, in many ways, it is, it hits on a financial level and it also hits on a, I guess, a cultural linguistic level is one of our challenges is that we are a bilingual film festival. And it is extremely difficult to find films that are subtitled in French because all foreign language films are, you know, the default is to, to uh, translate into English. We had nicely with virtual, the ability of having different, uh, you know, different subtitle files, which was really, really, really wonderful. So that is really one, you know, kind of points, one bit of anger from our audiences and our community is like, why are you playing so many how come we don't have French subtitles? And the reality is because it's thousands and thousands of dollars to subtitle a film to, that plays in a cinema, you know, and that we don't have the economic means for that. So that would be our only real, I would say like an actual, we are very angry at you, imagination, kind of a conflict. But the other one, you know, all the conflicts that you all wonderfully brought up and I think inherent in living in the world as queer in our various in our different spaces and on the on the different levels and realities with which we exist in those are inherent in how we live all aspects of our lives and therefore the images that we see and the images that we produce. Thank you Kat. I don't want to end on conflict of course and, and division but I want to bring it together and the idea of queer film festivals as building community. Can you, each of you, maybe in two sentences, just two sentences, uh, give me your best experience at a, at a queer film festival, like a moment where you felt community, whether you created it or you were visiting or participating, but uh, in your heart, was there a moment where you felt this is, where we belong together. When I first told you this, I was doing this for two years, so in the last year, 2019, the principal principal told me that if someone is a transgender, if someone is a transgender, we will give full free, free fees. Now, two transgenders have completed their education. I am very happy that I have seen a good outcome in this. One was when, uh, uh, this was um, a few years ago, um, we have on, we've only showed Blu-rays and a digital um, a medium, but there was this one moment when we, I think the, the Guete Institute was kind of digitizing all their, uh, pr all their film, uh, films, uh, uh, prints, 
and I think we we got we we could manage to screen a 16 mm uh, projection of Fassbinder's. Uh, the entire retrospective was screened, and I think ours was perhaps one of those last film festivals uh, where we could we could also deal with that medium of celluloid. And I think for me that for me and for many of us as organizers, that was a really really big high, because then of course the medium has completely changed. You know the way we kind of relate with that with that medium of uh, cinema is, is, is very different right now. The whole tactile quality of that has changed um, much, of course. But I think uh, what for me the moment real the, the, is, is, um, is also um, uh, is also is actually this this you know when we end on the last day, you know that that sense of the, the sense of fulfillment and the sense of vacuum that sort of sort of exists simultaneously and uh, despite everything, the fact that we are able to pull it off for another one one more year, uh, with, despite all the challenges, despite all the difficulties, uh, is really something that eggs us on and pushes us to go forward. First and foremost, and this is maybe the you know sense of sort of nostalgia that we all have right now, having lived through this for you know a year and a half, is that what it feels like and the power of being in a room with you know your with your folk with your folks with your um with your queer family and seeing yourself on a screen and what that feels like to be surrounded by you know us all like in a cinema you know and i in saying that and i could see all your faces were all kind of you know little goosebumps and little you know verklempt in there and i think that's really the, the queer moment is like what the what is the power of seeing yourself on the screen with with your with your family with your with your people? I've 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 I've, I've, I've had like so many of them. So to mention one you know, very particular, I, I've, like during our first year, we we had our venue which was situated right in a in a housing society, and uh, the neighbors were not really happy seeing you know a, a bus full of trans women coming into their neighboring house and uh, they were like well, what sort of uh, setup is that what are you guys doing is it uh, i mean they were slightly religious and all that so i mean they they wanted us out of that house uh for the screening so so one of the days uh, like the neighboring auntie she was like just like in the garden and she could see the film through her garden because we were doing this outdoor screening and she got really happy next day she came came with uh you know a basket full of uh, like fried fritters <laughs> so she was like i'm so happy go ahead do it and we're like okay maybe sometimes they just need to see the films and uh, and decide it for themselves <laughs> Thank you so much. And thank you all of you for sharing uh, those memories, but also um, all those insights into film festivals, community building in a queer context. And uh, maybe I just want to share mine real quick because I have this very specific moment uh, when I was a guest at, at Kashish Film Festival, which is hosting us today uh, before the opening in, in, in 2016. Um, you could feel the electricity in the air of people so excited when the lights went off. Nothing had happened yet, but you could feel electricity in the air. And I've never had that experience anywhere else. Um, but that to me, that meant community, just the joy of being together and anticipating what Kat has uh, described, I think, seeing yourself with others of your community on the screen. That anticipation uh, really, was my happy moment about a film festival community. I mean, what a what a uh, wonderful conversation this has been. I mean, this can go on forever for sure because like there's so much of content and so much of experiences which each of the film festival is bringing here. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this. And uh, just to say, yeah, are we all missing the physical festival at Kashish? I mean, like of course, Kashish this year also it's going to be online. Uh, unfortunately, next year we hope to return to Liberty Cinema. Again, the joy of being together and watching films of what our community on the big screen. And uh, that's been a joy. So thank you so much, Andrea, for this wonderful conversation. Thank you, Sadat, uh, Anindya, Kat, and Priya for joining in this conversation. And I really want to thank the Quebec government office in Mumbai for supporting this panel discussion and also supporting the festival. They're also supporting a bunch of uh, queer men Quebec uh, films which you are bringing from the Imagination Film Festival at, to our festival. 
So uh, that's a big shout out to our uh, association with CAT and Surf Festival. Um, so thank you for doing this particular thing. And uh, yeah, uh, and if you have any comments for any of the participants here, please put it in the chat box here down below. And I'm sure they'll see that and respond to your questions. Uh, so please, uh, if you have any questions for any of them, please put it here in the comment box and I'll make sure that they'll see that. And then. Thanks a lot, really appreciate this. Bye-bye. Uh,